Thanks, Tom. So I'll just lay the, the groundwork, the conceptual basis for this report, which of course started off originally with uh, a question from governments about what a changing climate me meant for changing extremes, and uh, if those extremes were changing, how we should manage those changes. In a way, this was filling a gap from the last full assessment report that the IPCC released in 2007, which of course reported on the state of the knowledge essentially up to 2006. And there's been a dramatic increase in the attention for adaptation in general as an important component of the overall question around climate change. But in doing so also for the notion that climate change is not just about what's happening to average temperatures and even average global temperatures, annual average global temperatures in 2100, but rather what's happening in shorter terms and not just what's happening to the averages, but what's happening to the variability and particularly the extremes. And there's a growing body of literature that acknowledges this, both on the natural science side, but particularly also on the disaster risk management side, where it's been increasingly acknowledged that there is experience in disaster risk management and disaster risk reduction that could bring very valuable lessons to the question of how we adapt to changing extremes. So while the report starts out with a question around what are these changes in extremes and how should we manage them, it's really framed around three topics that are at least of equal importance. So there's the question on the nature and severity of climate and weather events, but at least equally importantly around if a weather or climate event occurs, what's in its way? Are there people, are there people's assets where that event occurs? And if there are, how vulnerable are they to that event? So the picture is not just one driven by the natural science, but very much around the human systems exposed and vulnerable to those events. And that's depicted here in what's become a central feature of this report. It's centered around disaster risk as a convolution of those three elements, the weather and climate events, the exposure of people and assets to those events, and, the, and their vulnerability. And it's that combination that's very central to the overall analysis, and as Tom already pointed out, really required this very close collaboration between people with very different backgrounds coming like Claire from the pure atmospheric science side and people like myself coming from disaster risk management practice. And of course, all those three elements aren't static. They're highly dynamic. On the side of the weather and climate events, there are impacts of the overall climate on the occurrence of extremes. There's natural variability, and of course, there's the question of how the climate is now changing and what's, what that's doing to the occurrence of these weather and climate events. More importantly, even on the side of the vulnerability and exposure to those events, there is development, and the way development is increasing or decreasing vulnerability and exposure to extreme events. And of course, within development, there's a question of how you explicitly manage those risks, either through disaster risk reduction or climate change adaptation. And one of the key conclusions of the report is that they need to be seen as an overlapping continuum rather than as two separate areas of work. And of course, there there's feedbacks when disaster risk materializes that has an impact on development. It may set you up for a higher risk to future disasters. It may also create a window of opportunity to use public awareness on uh, the, the risks that this poses to development to enhance future disaster risk reduction. On the other side, development, of course, also has an impact on the level of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, which eventually has an impact on the occurrence of weather and climate events. Now, one of the big motivators behind the bigger questions underlying this report is a general sense that the world is becoming, um, is facing an increasing disaster risk. And of course, the, the primary interest on the part of the global community there is economic losses. And these are the statistics from the past three decades on what's happened to overall economic losses and insured economic losses. And while there's big interannual variability, you see a clear trend. Just to be clear, these are normalized losses. Some people may have been familiar to graphs that st show even steeper increases, but if you take constant dollars, uh, you take a bit of the edge off uh, the trend. But still, there is a trend, but again, acknowledging that interannual variability is large. Of course, one of the questions was, is this already due to climate change? And the report is quite clear that that's not the major factor behind the economic loss increases that we've seen so far. Increasing exposure of people and assets, increasing 
numbers of people in the world at large, increasing economic growth, particularly in areas that are quite exposed, has been the major cause of changes in disaster losses. And just look at the economic assets that are being built up continuously along the coast in Florida. There are retirement homes of people that will be evacuated when a major storm arrives, but the economic damage can be quite big. Now that immediately leads me to a second quite important conclusion that those economic losses are much higher in developed countries where we see that concentration of assets. But at the same time, fatalities, and I would argue the same is true for human suffering, are clearly concentrated in developing countries where over the, the past three decades we've seen about 95% of natural disaster related deaths occurring in developing countries. I'll hand over to, uh, to Claire from there. Um, this is the, the backdrop of how you should see what the report's been answering in terms of what's changing to those extremes. The question is, what does that mean in terms of that set of issues relating to the human uh, capital and human lives that are being hit by those events? So Claire, I'll hand over to you.